to understand this concept of conditional probability let's look at this example we have a factory inspector who randomly picks up an article and there are two machines that he can choose from machine A and machine B the probability that he picks up an article from machine A is 0.7 and the probability that he picks up an article from machine B is given as 0.3 now the probability that machine A produces a defective article let's assume is 0.2 and hence we know that the probability that machine A produces a non-defective article is 0.8. Further it's given that the probability that machine B produces a defective article is 0.3 and the, hence the probability that machine B produces a non-defective article is 0.7. So the question tells us that there are these two machines A and B a factory inspector can pick up a particular sample from either A or B. The probability that he picks it up from A is 0.7 or from B is 0.3. And these are the probabilities for the article being either defective or non-defective for each A and B. The question is, if it is known that the article that the inspector picked up is a good article which is a non-defective article then what is the probability that this article has been picked up from machine A it says given that the article that has been picked up is good what is the probability that the article is from machine A so let's now try and figure out how to solve this question if we now say that the article is picked up from machine A which means 0.7 and it is not defective then this would mean 0.7 into 0.8 which is 0.56 further if we look at article is picked up from machine A and it is defective this works out to 0.14 article is picked up from machine B and it is non-defective this works out to 0.21 and this finally works out to 0.09 now we have been told that the article which is picked up is non-defective which means 0.56 plus 0.21 so if the article is non-defective it would be 0.56 plus 0.21 which would make it 0.77 given that the article is not defective what is the probability that the article has been picked up from machine A then we would take article non-defective and machine A that means we are looking at this path which would give us 0.56 divided by article is non-defective which we've already calculated as 0.77 and hence the answer is 56 upon 77 which if we simplify it will become 8 upon 11 so this is the answer to the question which is given that the article is non-defective what is the probability that the article comes from machine a now another way of stating that would be probability of a given non-defective this is how we state conditional probability and the formula would be probability of a intersection non-defective which means that the probability of the article being from a and non-defective divided by probability of non-defective so this is the formula for conditional probability now as a variation if we cross multiply what we would get is probability of a intersection non-defective is probability of a given non-defective multiplied by probability of non-defective now if we just use some different terms here it would mean probability of a intersection b is probability of a given b multiplied by probability of b this would mean what is the probability 
of A occurring given that B has occurred. Now in an example if it is directly given or if it is possible to figure out that probability of A occurring does not depend on B at all which means that A and B are independent events then probability of A given B is nothing but probability of A alone and hence if A and B are independent events then probability of A intersection B would be equal to probability of A multiplied by probability of B. So this is how independent events can be built from conditional probability example. So let's get back to our example of rolling of five dice and the question asked was if five dice are rolled then in how many ways can we get a total of nine on all these five dice put together. This is an application of what we've learned as distribution of objects. So let's look at this. There are five dice and some number is shown up on each dice. So if we say D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4 plus D5, these will be the numbers shown up on these five dice and this should be equal to 9. And we know that no value can be 0. So if we assign 1 to each, then what we are left with is 4 more to be assigned because if we assign 1 to each we already have a total of 5 we still need 4 more and because there are 5 different values we will need 4 partitions as we have learnt earlier so we have in all 8 objects the 4 values remaining and the 4 partitions 8 objects out of which we have 4 of one type and 4 of another type which is the 4 identical values and the 4 partitions. So we will have 8 factorial divided by 4 factorial into 4 factorial. So our final answer actually in simple terms would be 8C4. There are 8C4 ways of getting a total of 9 on these 5 dice put together. If we just convert this question into a probability question and if we say what is the chance of getting a total of 9 on 5 dice rolled and the values added together? This is the number of favorable ways of getting it and then we would simply take 8C4 divided by the total number of possibilities which in this case would be 6 raised to 5 because there are 6 possibilities on each of these and there are 5 dice so 6 raised to 5. And hence this would be the chance of getting a total of 9 on these 5 dice put together. So this is how we can actually look at these real life scenarios and look at our concepts and figure out the number of ways of doing something which was here or the chance of doing something which was in terms of probability. In fact, uh, I don't know how many of you have watched this movie called 21 where a group of people actually design a kind of a formula or a strategy to crack some game in a casino. It is similar to what we have just learned. So maybe you can also have a look at this movie called 21.